Hi, this is Mrs. Homer, and today we'll be talking about classification and taxonomy. So classification is basically grouping things together based on their shared qualities. So Netflix classifies things based on shared qualities or genres to help you better find what you're looking for. In biology, if we're studying with classification of living things and putting living things into groups, then we call that taxonomy. So we're going to be looking at taxonomy and using it to help us understand evolutionary history. And the def the word that means evolutionary history is phylogeny. So classification or taxonomy and phylogeny, the history or the evolutionary history of a species, is going to kind of work together to teach us a lot about uh, where an organism uh, came from and its evolution. So why do we classify organisms? Why are there scientists who spend time with this? And it's just simply to make things easier to find or identify, and also to help us draw relationships among species. And so if you're thinking about net, the Netflix example, obviously it would be really hard to find a movie that you might like if there was no grouping or classification. And that's the same for organisms. So the first man who really is known as the father of taxonomy is Carl Linnaeus. Now, Carl Linnaeus, he classified organisms based on their similar characteristics. So he used what we call morphology or physical traits to help group them together. And his main categories were vegetabilia and animalia. Now, Carl Linnaeus didn't have uh, DNA or evolution to help bolster his taxonomy or his classification, but he did get us started on the road to current taxonomy and current classification. The most recent change to our uh, taxonomy was by Carl Wosey. So we started with the Carl and we really end this with the Carl. Uh, Carl Wosey uh, really based his classification system on evolutionary relationships and used DNA to really bolster um, his classification systems. So one really good example of how the, uh, this change from Linnaeus to Wosey is the pill bug and the pill millipede. So if you look at these two organisms, uh, they're going to have been classified in the same category as Linnaeus because they look an awful lot alike. So they share a lot of similar characteristics. But through DNA evidence, we know that these two species are not related. In fact, they have similar spe uh, similar characteristics because of what we call convergent evolution, where they evolve those similar traits based on similar environmental conditions, but they're not related. So in today's classification systems, these two groups would be much further related than in Linnaeus's system. So it's really important to bring DNA uh, into our classification systems uh, and to bring evolution into our uh, evolution into our classification systems so that we do it correctly. But I will note, uh, this is one of my favorite quotes. It says, no classification is complete and perfect for all purposes. So the classification, classification is going to change. It's going to uh, be different. And there are some scientists that use different types of classification. And as we learn more, we will continue to adapt and change our classification systems. So how are organisms classified today? Organized or Organisms are classified today based on taxons. So taxons are just different levels. And today's system is broken into really eight different levels. So domains has been recently added to the top of the traditional seven different levels or the different taxons. And so technically there are eight different taxons into which uh, organisms are broken. So we'll start at the top. At the top, there are domains. So domains are going to be the largest uh, groups of organisms. So they're going to be very broad. So they're not going to give you a lot of details about the organisms that are in that group because they're just huge groups. And there are only three domains. The first is archaea, which are ancient bacteria. The second are eubacteria, which is a different type of bacteria. So the first two domains are just bacterias. The last domain 
encompasses everything else. So it encompasses plants, animals, fungi, and protists. So you could imagine it doesn't get very specific up in the domain categories. Now, from the domains, we're going to break them into six kingdoms. And really, we want to focus on how that eukaryo domain is broken into plants, animals, fungus, and protists. So the kingdoms are now starting to get a little bit more specific. So we separated the plants from the animals, from fungus, from protists. So now we're getting a little bit more specific as we go down our chart, and we're getting a little bit smaller. From there, we're going to continue to get more specific and smaller in our groups. So it's going to go from kingdom to phylum to class, order, family, genus, and finally we'll end with one single species. And so as we go down, our groups that we're going to use are going to get smaller and smaller, more specific, and they're going to start to look more and more alike. And so if you compared uh, members that are in the same genus, they would be very similar. Versus if you compared members in the same phylum, you would see a wide variety of different organisms. So one uh, quick and easy way to remember the order of these taxons um, is through using a mnemonic. So one of my favorites is dumb kings play cards on four green stools. So there's an image that some teacher came up with here. Um, and this is supposed to hopefully be burned into your brain so you think, oh, these dumb kings played cards on four green stools. And the first letter of each of that is supposed to help you remember domains, kingdoms, phylums, class, order, family, genus, species. Uh, you can come up with your own saying. There are other ones out there as well, like for instance, dumb King Philip came over from German soil. Whichever one works for you, uh, you can use that. But I will never ask you on a test or a quiz to list these in order. You will always have a resource if you're going to do that. All right, so I really like this image right here because it really shows you how we go from being so broad in the kingdoms, so these giant groups, to being very specific at species. And this shows you that as you go down, these groups are going to become increasingly more similar and they are going to have, um, they are going to end in the species which has just one group. No other species can share that category and no other species shares that level. So it's just, uh, it gets more and more and more specific. Okay, so here is a big hint and a big clue for a lot of the questions that we'll ask about taxonomy. So if you are in one level, in one taxon with another species, so I'm comparing two species and they're both in, let's say, order. They're in the same order. Um, that means that anything above order, they will have in common. So Because to be in the same order, they had to be in the same kingdom, phylum, class, and then order. So um, that is, uh, they had to be in those same levels together. Now, the thing is, below order, they wouldn't have to be in the same family, genus, or species. And so if you're in the same taxon, I'll like go to this image here. So if you're in the same taxon, let's say you're in the same class, you would also be in the same everything above it, kingdom and phylum, but you don't have to be in the same everything below it. Uh, and so that's kind of a, a trick or a tool of the trade. So take a minute right now to answer the questions in the video. All right, so hopefully you came up with these answers. The smallest category that black bears and grizzly bears share would be the genus. So you can see they're in here together. And this, of course, is the smallest category. Everything above it is larger. The taxon that's most specific is going to be the species because there's only one species in there, uh, one group. That's it. How many types of organisms are together in the taxon species? Again, just one species can occupy that taxon, just one. If two organisms are in the same order, will they also be in the same class? Well, the class is above it, so yes, 
they will be in the same class. But will they also be in the same family? Well, they might be in the same family, but they don't have to be. So no, uh, they don't have to be in the same family. All right, from a taxonomy, we develop what we call binomial nomenclature, which literally just means a two word naming system. You probably have heard it called scientific name. So the scientific name of an organism is comprised of two words, the first being the genus and the second being the species. So if I want to refer to, to humans, I would refer to us as homo sapiens, the genus followed by the species. Now, the words that we're going to use for the genus and the species will be found in Latin so that they're universal. No matter what language is being spoken, everybody will use the same scientific name. And this is to avoid some discrepancies. For instance, pumas can also be called mountain lions and about, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 other things. And so if we call them by their scientific name through binomial nomenclature, we all know that we're talking about the same organism. Now, there's a couple of rules that you keep in mind. So when I say Homo sapiens as our uh, scientific name for humans, the first word or the genus is always capitalized. The second word is always lowercase. So genus capitalized, species lowercase. And then if you're writing it, we're going to italicize this word, these words. So they'll be slanted. Now, what if you can't do italics? So you're writing it or something. In that case, you would then just underline it to show that it is a scientific name. So you probably, maybe you haven't noticed it, but you've probably seen scientific names before, even in my class. So take a minute to answer these questions on scientific names. All right, so hopefully you answer these questions. Uh, for the peacock, the genus that it belongs to is pavo, and the species is crustatus. Notice capital P for the genus, lowercase c for the species. Which part of the scientific name is capitalized? That would be the genus. And if the scientific name cannot be italicized, what should you do? You should underline it. All right, I've got a few more questions for you to practice using this chart here. So go ahead and answer the questions about this chart showing the evolutionary history of several species. All right, well, hopefully you came up with some answers. According to the chart, how many taxonic levels does the coyote have in common with the otter? Well, if you compare them, they have the kingdom, phylum, class, and order together that are the same, so they share four. If you were to include domain, which should be above kingdom, it would be five. To what order does the leopard belong? Well, if I find order and go over here to leopard, it belongs to the carnivora order. In fact, all of them belong to the carnivora leopard. That's where they start to break away from each other. So they're all related down to the order. Notice everything above it is the same, but below order, it becomes different. Which organism on the chart has a scientific name Taxidea taxis. Well, that's the American badger, right here, the genus and the species. What is the scientific name for the otter? Now, I picked this one because it's Lutra Lutra. Notice that they have the same word. Well, we're going to repeat Latin words because there's a limited number of them. And so Lutra Lutra, notice the genus is still capitalized and the species is still lowercase. And then what level of classification is missing? I already mentioned that the domain is missing from this chart. And lastly, the two species that are most closely related are the ones that go the furthest down together. So they have the they are in the genus together, and that would be the coyote and the gray wolf. All right, lastly, I want to just take a quick minute to mention what a dichotomous key is, because you're going to be using that to identify the scientific name of species. So a dichotomous key is just a simple tool 
uh, that helps you identify any type of item in the natural world. So you'll see them for trees, for wildflowers, for reptiles, even rocks. And it just consists of a series of questions that leads the user to the correct scientific name of the species. So I'm gonna give you an example of this. So this is a very short uh, dichotomous key. So for this organism here, if we're trying to figure out what species this insect belongs to, we're gonna answer a series of questions. The first question is about the abdomen and the thorax. Well, I can see that the thorax is striped, but the abdomen is black. So I'm gonna go to question number two. Question number two is about the antenna. And I can see here that the antenna are straight. So I'm gonna go to question number three. Now I have to decide, are the wings longer or shorter than the body? And I'm going to say that they're longer than the body because this wing right here looks about as long as the body is. And so I'm going to say longer than the body. And there I am. I've come to my answer. The scientific name with the genus is Problematica and the species is Contrellus. So the scientific name is Problematica Contrellus. And so that's just a simple way of how you use a dichotomous key. Just answer the questions until you come to the species it belongs to. That's all I have for you today. Have a good rest of your day.